Well, hi, I'm Donna Weber, customer onboarding expert, and I am no triathlete. But I do like to step out of my comfort zone on a regular basis. This is me kayaking on the American River on the, the rapid called Troublemaker. Now, how many of you have been whitewater rafting or kayaking? Oh, a lot of you. You know how scary it can be, right? You're in this dynamic environment, there's moving water, and there's rocks everywhere. That's why I wear a helmet. Just like James, every time I go kayaking, I feel scared. And I grew up as a bookworm, like the super uh, goody-goody studious. And so being an outdoor active person is not second nature for me. But I learned a saying that really helps me and maybe will help you. I learned it from Nelson Mandela, that courage is not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. So my challenge for you today, and you know, learning from what uh, James has shared, is to step out of your comfort zone, to challenge yourself, to step away from the status quo at your company, to feel some fear, maybe zip lining this afternoon or going even for a hike, or even that, have you been on that chairlift? That can get pretty scary. <laughs> so challenge yourself in, in how you do things at your company and challenge how you deliver value to your, to your customers. Now, Dave talked about having impact. Now, of course, it's important and critical to have impact at your company, but I want you to have impact with your customers as well and think about how can you do that as quickly as possible. So this is an expert excerpt from my book, Onboarding Matters, that the main reason customers leave in the first year is because they never get value from the pot, your product in the first place. They fail to launch. So how do we avoid that fail? How do we avoid the churn? How do we avoid that trough? Well, I want you to consider a phased approach. So just like James gets up and makes a choice to take that first step every day, we can make a choice to deliver value to customers quickly. Consider phases rather, that mo rather than that monolithic approach. Phased deployments means chunking things down into achievable components, just like, like James does to, to, to achieve his amazing feats. I want you to think about value. How can you deliver value to your customers as quickly as possible? And I gotta tell you, as awesome as your products are, going live with your product does not deliver value. Logging into your product does not make them a hero. Value is the importance, worth, or usefulness of something. And there's no guarantee that just because you went live with your product that your customer's getting any value. Now, I learned from Nito Kubain, who's this, the president of High Point U University, that it needs to be appreciated value that is meaningful to your customer. So I'm going to say that again because I want you to write it down. Appreciated value that is meaningful to your customer, that your customers relate to. Logging into your product is not meaningful. I don't know if they would appreciate that. It needs to be appreciated value your customers can relate to. That is meaningful. So I'd like you to consider a value drip. <clears throat> I'm going to get some water. Where you start with some value, deliver value immediately, and then along the customer's lifetime with you. To address this value drip, I created quick wins. So I define it here. Quick means uh, fast in, an, in development or occurrence, a rapid succession of events. And to win is to succeed in arriving at a place or a state. Now, you know, James was saying he didn't, you know, you don't do all these Ironmans to so show up collapsed on the floor. You show up, you know, there's the power pose, right? Imagining all your clients are celebrating that, they're, that they bought your product, that they're using your platform. So quick wins are so important because accelerated time to value reduces churn and it increases NRR. How many of you care about NRR? Yeah, it increases expansion. So that's why we want to get to value as quickly as possible. So let's talk a bit more about those quick wins. Quick wins are measured in days or weeks, not months or years. 
It's a way to commemorate wins along the journey. Every time your customer experiences value and has a win, they get an endorphin hit. So guess what? When they get endorphin hits, they're going to stay engaged, and they'll be partnering with you even if your implementations are long and complex. You break things down into achievable nuggets, and we're going to talk about that. What is an achievable nugget? And I really want you to think about the concepts, context, and mindsets that are going to help your customers be successful. And you know, I've been really thinking about this mindset because you know, with James, we learned it's really about the mindset, really. You know, it's beyond the body. It's the mindset. So sometimes your products might be really awesome, but I've worked with so many companies where the customers didn't have the mindset to be successful, so they just never adopted it. Any of you have experienced that? Like, I worked with companies where um, their biggest competitor was spreadsheets. Anyone here have that challenge? And I got to tell you, there's something about spreadsheets. People just love them, you know? They spent years creating their conditional formatting and their pivot tables, and they just don't want to give them up. Even though the, your product provides so much more value, they can't even, like, comprehend it. So we need to, oftentimes, the quick win just can be helping them get the right mindset to be successful with your platform. <clears throat> so these are the benefits. We talked about the, 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 the endorphin hits. And if you read my book, I talk about the neuroscience of onboarding. Th those endorphin hits, the, uh, the mental state, are so important to get your customers on the same side with you so that you can have a smooth and successful onboarding and uh, lifetime together. Um, that'll mean you have engaged customers, there's no trust to fall into, so your teams don't have to be spending all this time just trying to kind of get those frustrated customers back on track. And guess what? Your customers look good. If they can start to commemorate wins with their internal teams, with the buyer, with the stakeholder, then the buyers will be delighted they purchased your product and not dwelling in buy buyer's remorse. And then, of course, you get that reduced churn and increased revenue, which anyone want that? <laughs> okay, next I'm going to talk about three examples of quick wins. Each of these companies leveraged my onboarding fast track, where we moved from their current onboarding state to an optimized state that was scalable, where everyone knew their roles and responsibilities, and it's a proactive, prescriptive process. And in each of these, we baked in a quick win to ensure customers are delivering value, to, are receiving value. And you know, whenever I'm working with companies, I'm always looking at where can we get to value? Where can we get to value? <clears throat> because that's the point, right? That's why customers buy your product in the first place. So um, number one, the first one is a marketing platform for real estate agents. It's based in the US, bootstrap startup. And what was happening is the uh, sales reps were promising that the platform would go live in 30 days. It was usually taking 45 to 60 days. Customers were pausing and canceling. Uh, payments and they were really frustrated and the CSMs were busy trying to win back their love. So when I asked them, well, what is value? What is a quick win? What I heard was, well, you know, the, um, the, it's like we have two different companies, uh, the, the pre-sales and the post-sales. The sales reps are selling the platform, but what really sets us apart are our services. They had uh, these amazing CSMs who were strategic coaches. They have this amazing exclusive community. They have uh, thought leadership. Their founders have all this amazing content. They're thought leaders in the field. So rather than waiting to engage the CSM until after the platform goes live and everyone's frustrated, we engage the CSM in week one. And so the, the minute the deal goes out, the, the minute the deal closes, an automated email goes out with a link to schedule the first meeting with a CSM, and the CSM starts strategic coaching week one. So now we're changing their mindsets, the concept and context, so that the customers can hit the ground running the moment the platform is live. And they're not just sitting there waiting in the dark. So now they're getting value in week one. The CSM gives them exclusive access to that community and access to the thought leadership. So we're starting to get them ready to be successful with the platform. 
So it's all about changing mindsets. Second example, <clears throat> I worked with a company in um, the UK. They're a big data platform, extremely high growth. And uh, the, they have technical success managers. They're like really nice data scientists. <laughs> and um, so they would, the, the onboarding was, OK, we're going to go live with all of your data. We're going to go into production. I, well, what does that mean? I mean, if you have a big company, that could take up, a, up to a year to go into production with all that data. So instead, we started with one use case or one data set. So we chunk it down into an achievable nugget, right? And so now we can say onboarding is done in 60 days or less. We can check that onboarding box. But now they have infinite opportunity to deliver ongoing value for the next use case, the next data set. So they sell to personas. They can go live in two weeks. They're getting value really quickly. And now they have infinite opportunities to keep selling. So that all started with a quick win. In case you're wondering, this is what my onboarding fast track includes. Um, I roll up my sleeves, I connect with your team, and over 13 weeks, we move from your current state to that proactive prescriptive state that delivers value. And it's all about scaling your team. So how do you get started? Well, there's uh, five steps here. One, you listen. Two, you define. Three, you design. Four, you execute. And then five, you scale. Um, I can't see the notes. Oh, there we go. Thanks. So one, listen. Rather than then just jumping in and assuming you know what value means for your customers, you need to ask them. And you know, when, when uh, uh, people ask me what's the main piece of advice I have for you, listen to your customers. You know, so many companies think, oh, we'll just go live with our product, we'll just have you log in. You need to find out what a win is, uh, how quickly they want to get there, what's meaningful to them. So the first thing is to listen, and we could talk more about that throughout the conference if you're interested. Then you define a quick win, something again you can get to in days or weeks. And you design it, you might create playbooks, you might create um, assets, collateral for internal teams, for your customers, and then you roll it out. And it's easy to, you can just pilot it with a few customers. So pilot, pilot it, test it out, find out what works, what doesn't, and then you refine it. And once you know it's working, then you can start to scale it. You might scale it with some self-paced content, with some articles from support, maybe something with a, you know, in a learning management system on your website. So it doesn't have to be something that every CSM or onboarding person does uh, individually. And then you repeat, right? And once you have some quick wins that work, then you can start to create a menu of quick wins where depending on the use cases your customers have or the segment or the personas, you might have unique use cases that, uh, that you can deploy. And you can start rolling them out. OK, so let's recap. You move from monolithic onboarding and implementations to quick wins. And you did deliver value in days or weeks. And it's all about, like, how can I deli deliver value even before my product goes live? So you know, I work with some companies where they've changed from a mon monolithic deployment to an agile and iterative way to, do to, do to go live. Uh, maybe you chunk it into different components. Maybe you're changing those mindsets with concepts and contexts that are really valuable. You do that by listening to customers to find out what's meaningful to them. And then you just start. You know, just as James said, you don't know what is beyond the next horizon until you take those steps. So just start and then find out what you learn. And all of that equals success. Success for you, success for your customers. And I'm here throughout the conference. I'd love to hear your ideas. And if we have a few minutes you know, for Q&A, and I also want to hear your ideas. But if you want to talk through your ideas for quick wins with me, I'm happy to share uh, my feedback. I have another question for you. How will you transform your customer's business? 
The point is not to go live with your product. It's to transform them, make them heroes because they, bo they bought your product. So don't dwell on the technology, even though it's awesome. Think about your customers and how you can deliver value, how you can have impact immediately and then along their entire lifetime with you. And I'd like to extend a personal invitation. I'm delivering a customer success forum for leaders. It's interactive. We're going to talk about thriving in turbulent times. So you can take a photo of the QR code here and sign up. It's a no slide zone, and we're going to have breakouts and some spotlight coaching. And it's really for you, just to talk through kind of what's working and ideas for improvement. And that's on uh, Tuesday, October 18th. So remember, when customers win, you win. So I'd like to uh, take some time for Q&A and also um, ideas you have for quick wins. And I've got my email here. If you'd like to get a copy of the, the, the slides and if you want a signed copy of my book, come on and uh, find me after uh, the session. So what ideas do you have for quick wins? Exactly like, oh, I don't really want this. Um, <laughs> okay, so recently we revamped our entire onboarding process where we um, just do a basic intro at first to get them a, a, a quick win so they can get started. And then we give them a choice of workflows to get started with and, and they, they choose each workflow and each one of them is a quick win. And that's worked really well. So we're okay. onboarding now in record time. Like how long? like less than 30 days. Oh my God, congratulations. Great. Thank you for sharing. Donna, thanks for the overview. It was great. Um, we do a lot of quick wins. We actually introduces this idea of getting the customer to first value and then to full value, and that helped a lot in terms of anchoring to outcome success plans. What do they want most, and how do we get them moving on that journey? One of the pitfalls I'm seeing is sometimes after first value, people say, we've arrived, both our team and their team, right? So any, any wisdom on once you've gotten that first bit of value or first pieces of value to make sure that both the customer stays focused and your team stays focused to keep going? Yeah, I think it's really helpful to show customers, I talk about this a lot in the book, that you need to show the journey ahead. So that's what, what I base my orchestrated onboarding framework on. And um, so you need to show that, that journey ahead. And so there might be key milestones that you commemorate um, and then show them kind of here, here's where we are, here's where we've been, and here's where we're going so they can see the path. Hi. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear more about one of the examples that you gave about bringing the CSM in earlier during the onboarding journey and how you keep those lanes clear and not muddled. So say that again. So the first example, I think it was the first example that you gave of having a CSM come in yeah, earlier. Yeah. Um, that's something that we've tried to do in different ways at different times, but it's gotten muddled between an onboarding consultant and a CSM. So I'm just wondering if you could talk yeah, about so, that. Yeah, so when I work with companies, we actually map out swim lanes of who's engaged when and what the purpose is. So um, generally, um, uh, uh, what I find when the onboarding team, the implementation specialists, when they get engaged first, um, what happens is throughout the customer journey, the customers like keep hanging on them. Do you find that? Um, that they, they, they're like, you know, oh, you're so awesome. I just want to keep working with you. And they keep reaching out for all of their challenges and questions. And uh, they anchor on the customer, right? They latch on to them. So I like to have the CSM come in early through in, the, in, an, in a handoff meeting and help them to understand the path ahead. Uh, you know, this, set the CSM up as that a strategic trusted advisor that's showing the journey. And then they might do a handoff to the onboarding specialist or the onboarding team. They might stay engaged throughout, but they, they step back and then the um, onboarding team can do a handoff back to the CSM. So um, that's a way you can, you can create that journey. So you're moving, the, at the beginning, it's really important to have the big picture to show the customers that path to success before you dive into all the technical uh, uh, um, details of the implementation. 
We have time for a couple more questions. Back in the back. What's the difference between the implementation and <laughs> Well, I could talk about that all day. But uh, implementation is about, you know, uh, implementation is like the integrations. How do you integrate your product? What APIs are you connecting with? What data are you migrating? It's about checklists. It's about dates. It's about project plans. Onboarding, and, and implementation is part of onboarding, but the onboarding needs to be where you start with that relationship, because relationships matter, and um, you, where you know what the value is, where you've gotten clear on the goals and the plan, on the roles and responsibilities, um, and how, it's, it's a lot about the how, um, and also the why. I'm just thinking about what James said, you know? So, so actually, it's the why, you know? Uh, Simon Sinek's book, Start With Why. So, with onboarding, you start with why. Why are we here? The success outcomes, the objectives. And then the implementation is the how. Does that help, Jordan? Okay. And then when the how gets difficult, just like we learned from James, if you know your why, you're going to keep moving through it. Um, do you have any examples of how you celebrate milestones? Like, I think we're doing a lot of things right, but we don't necessarily pause and go, you did it, you did the thing. Do you have and any so examples? any ideas for celebration? Any of you do that with your? Our onboarding is very technical and cumbersome and requires a ton of change management. Uh, we do many celebrations after we complete each milestone and then we do a formal graduation. Uh, where we celebrate the journey and talk about where we started and where we are, and then we create goals going forward. And that's and how, when we do and a how handoff. how do you celebrate, Miranda? How do we celebrate? We're on a Zoom. We high-five each other. Mm. I mean, there's, you know, it, it, it doesn't have to be something big or huge, but just acknowledging the journey of where they were, where they are now, and where we're going. Um, that's really big. It, that it gives you that, that mental hit, so... Yeah, and just, I just want to go back to that visual, showing, um, and if folks want to see an example, showing a visual of the journey where, like, all you do is you show all the points, and then you highlight where you are, and then you show, look how far we've come, you know? The, the visual really helps uh, the mental, um, it, it's amazing. It just helps people kind of process it and arrive where you are. Um, it's just amazing. So I'm happy to continue the conversation throughout the conference. I'll be here, and thank you so much. Thank you.